Some new bugs have come out. Lots and lots and lots and lots of bugs. Got our hands on some of these? We uh, did get our hands on some of them a little bit early. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare with that model, being honest. Done it all right thrown with the airbrush and then just, just started blocking in uh, back with the black and all the carapace and all the armor. And then three or four mental breakdowns later. Bon appetit. <laughs> we also had an awesome challenge in, in office, didn't we? We thought it'd be really cool to get loads of people from the office to paint the Hormigan Beach. Number one, come up with a whole myriad of different schemes. Um, and also at the same time, just, just really show how flexible Gulped and the kit is and what you can do with it. Have you seen this uh, 90s Marine challenge that's been doing the rounds on socials this week? Mm. Have, yeah. It's been good. Did any used in and uh, did you? I didn't know that. I planned to, then August happened and everyone <laughs> had holiday. Um, yeah. I planned on not entering and then like the day Oh, you posted like a last minute. Well, I didn't enter, but like the day before, like everyone was posting all this stuff. And I'd had this um old like space marine captain that I had on my desk for like, probably over a year that I've just been sort of, I just sort of pick up every now and then. It's just like a little palette cleanser. Mm. And then like on the last day I was like, Oh, I might paint a bit of this, you know. <laughs> but uh no, I didn't get it done for the for the challenge or anything. But no, I, I know want... James made a big song and dance about buying a load of second I, I got, I'm I, got the I got the box. Literally, as soon as I saw it, uh, I saw Desert post, it, I was like, I'm definitely this is like me all over, like second head. Like, um, bought the box, um, had to strip them, managed to strip them, which was fine. Um, and then August happened, and I just had no time. So <laughs> that was great. Um, I've got one sitting on my desk. It is undercoated, blood redded, and that's about it. Um, so yeah, have no chance. Um, I'm still going to finish it though. I'm still committed to, even though I'll be that. Put it I'll, on the list. I'll be, I'll be like that marathon runner that like comes the last person coming across the finish line like three days after after the marathon's finished. Like that's that's kind of. You like should how post I'm... it on the second of September, 2024. Yeah, and be like, here we go. Yeah. What if he does it again next year? <laughs> oh, he might do it again next just, year. Yeah, just, I'll just say. I that. imagine he would. Yeah. Right. I don't. It, know. It, it probably do, really. He'll probably do a different challenge or something. Maybe a so. different model or yeah, a different. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen any like community challenge like take off like thing, that. Take off. It's like been that great. Well, he, as did the um the Lord of Lights before, didn't he? Where he done the Lord of Lights. So he's done a similar sort of thing. Yeah, that wasn't a challenge. It wasn't so a challenge. Was just, he he did a tutorial series on it, so everyone decided to start. I think it's just it's just what like how that it shows how much everyone in the community loves him. Yeah. Like there's no one else I could think of that can put a challenge out like that and get that reaction. It also it. shows how much everyone loves retro space marines. Yeah, and which, that. which is funny. An excuse talking... to paint old models, yeah. Yeah. Have you been painting anything else lately, last week or so? Oh, I've been working on a cheeky little captain at the minute. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not saying anymore. Well, no, no hint at colours, just in case anyone anyone couldn't tell. Probably anyway. Blood Angel, surely, Joe. I don't, I don't need to hint, it's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we ask? Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. ask. I don't know. Yeah. I gave him an opportunity to to fight the Blood Angel fanboy allegations, and not happening. <laughs> <laughs> he's doubled down. Yeah, he's not beating the allegations. Yeah, no. Blood Angel yeah. fanboy. It's happened. Certified. Yeah. Oh, technically, my uh, my little second M Marine that I was painting was a Blood Angel. So I'm gonna have to, <sighs> have to take a hit on that. Yeah, take you, it over. you take it me over. off guard the other day because you said something. Oh, did you say something, or did I see it in a comment or something? And you were like. Oh, as a Blood Angel fan, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I'm not another one. You, like, How mean, did like, you not know that? Right, the thing you, is, like, Joe, got me like in disguise because you're not like as overt about it as James. Okay. And I feel like I've been tricked. It's like when you find out a band is like, you, you, you like a band and then you find out it's like Christian metal. And you're like, oh, they've <laughs> tricked me. They've tricked me. Uh, no, I've, I've always been, Blood Angels are my chapter of choice, but I never really paint much for myself anyway. And I don't go on about it to death like certain people. In the all, the all, the, all that matters never... is that, in the words of Indiana Jones, you chose wisely. All right. So, so that's all that matters. I'm not sure if Indiana Jones was the one to coin that phrase. I think that was a bit around the world. Don't you be the... knocking Indiana Jones's. <laughs> don't you be knocking Indiana Jones, mate. So, the, uh, the, the only Marines that I've known you to paint for yourself was the Sons of Horus that you started. And I thought that that's. Right. Don't be calling me out for my failed army project. Yeah. <laughs> I say started. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because so I thought that was your that was what your uh, yeah but that's heresy on me, isn't it? right choice yeah. George that's all that matters okay well you know I did yeah. I did uh, when I first started out here I brought a bunch of well, a bunch of blood angels but I painted women yeah but I thought you were that's just trying why to butter you got him the up. job I, I didn't know I, I didn't know I, I thought though. you were just trying to butter him no. up to get the job I should have doubled down really because I didn't actually know at the time that James was so so die hard for the blood angels but yeah. I should have I should have tripled down on that brought even more yeah, yeah. that would have been the play wasn't, wasn't needed it's fine. Yeah, that was the play. We had the uh, we had the Nova reveals as well this week. Yeah, mm -hmm. exciting stuff.
Anything uh, tickled your fancy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, lots. What's your? Right. Let's just do a quick sort of top top three each. If you've got it, so I mean, what, you're, what's uh, your he's going to he's going to talk about the Marines, isn't he? So yeah, of course, go on. What's your top? Your number one. I've been looking for a new Lord of Skyfall model for my Blood Angels for a long time, and that captain, the Blood Angel version of it, the salt, the salt captain. Oh, um, the, the the jump, jump captain. captain. Yeah, I I'm I'm going to go hard on that model. The big question: Are you keeping the rock, or are you? That's very good. Do you know what? I, I it's very it's very similar to the Zephon rock from the 30k, so it's quite similar to that. One thing I will say on that is that this does look better than that because I thought that Zephon kind of looked like he was falling over a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. He's, I love like, that pushing, model. I did think off. that was a good model, especially even for a Blood Angel. I thought that was a very cool model. You heard Zephon. it here first. Cut that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but he looked like he was falling over a little bit. Yeah, no, it's, he's, he's, he's like, like pouncing, lunging off the rock, which is quite cool. Uh, no, but the new, the new one is, is mega. I, I'm, and, and when I saw, that, I saw the Ultra one first, and I'm a big fan of open poses. So the chainsaw across the chest was like, oh, it's not too bad. It covers a lot of detail. The open pose, when I saw the Blood Angel, when I was like, holy cow, that looks amazing. Um, I did comment on it when I posted it on Instagram, but um, I'm not too keen on the fireproof sort of like cloth that he's got. I don't know. It just kind of looks like, I have to see the model in the flesh. Right, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to say it. Right. These are sci-fi models. Don't care, mate. This Still is all right. made up. And then you come in here with like, actually, it's not realistic. Surely the jetpacks would set fire to his car. Are we really going to go there? I, I am going there. Are we yeah. really going to go, go there? I'm going there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It, I'm going there 100%. The laws, the laws of reality are still in that universe. Like things do catch fire. They're just, so, they're just yeah, they're just yeah. redesigned, aren't they? They're yeah. just, they're, they're, is is it still... impossible to conceive that these like super soldiers would have like fire retardant All I'm going to say is when I, I see, think, I think you're, you're speaking too much as someone who has grown up loving Star Wars. Because Star <laughs> Wars, <laughs> Star Wars is the pinnacle of something doesn't make sense. And it's like, oh no, but obviously it's space. So there's da -da 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 -da, this version of it. And it's like, oh no, oh, it's the false. Right. Anything, I want to say for the record. Anything that doesn't make sense in Star Wars. It's the false. Robes catch fire in Star Wars. It's happened. Yeah. I've seen the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah so saying. why wouldn't they catch why wouldn't they catch fire before we go then? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but I, it, going back to the model, like I, I, I wonder if it, there is a, an ex, a, a reason, an, an explanation from like law wise as to why yeah, we, the model looks cool with some cloth on it. Can we so, start so, like can so, we start like phoning a friend looting on the podcast think, every think, time yeah, we have a that's question it, like this? We'll break it down. Excuse I, me. Uh, why is there a cloth on, on this model? <laughs> I, I think I think because I've only seen it 2D I'm not seeing it like, like with Zephon like with Sanguinius when I first saw it like you don't really see the pose and how it all works it, it just looks in the photograph like the, cur the, the material curves into the path of the jetpack but it potentially like, in hand it won't I am being really granular on like how intricate a little bit of cloth is but I, I just like realism when it comes to it in that sense. You could probably remove the cloth if you don't want it. it probably, yeah, yeah, we'll see. So that was my top one. I'm going to go yeah. about the captain for three hours. But uh, captain, the command squad is absolutely amazing. Like, oh, yeah, my the squad's good. So wow. The, the like, command squad is in, is in my top three as well, easily. I think it's in um, everyone's top three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Specific, specifically the ancient. Like, the, the, the ancient. The, 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 that's your favorite one. That's, the, that's one of the best models of the whole reveal. Let alone in that. It pack. is good. It is good. I, I, you two like the bionic arm. Oh, thing, I, no, I don't like the bionic like, arm. Oh, no. No, 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 you're no, no, with no. me. Yeah, you're I, with me. Sorry. I, I, Adam, Adam liked the bionic arm. Adam liked the bionic I, I just think that like it's really cool that they're starting to show like a bit of uh, a bit not heritage, but a bit of like history. You like the story behind it. I like it, the story like, behind it. Like yeah. you know, but when Primaris first came out, they were all like shiny. They're all like perfect. Like you know, they're not. They've got any. They they. The way they were released is really clever because in that way you can flavor them to, to, to how you want them to be. But it's nice to see now that like a bit of like timeline has obviously progressed and seeing almost like veteran status primaris and you're seeing all the little nuances of of heritage that um that firstborn marines would have in a lot of the kits, which is nice. Um I think the pose, he looks really he looks solid, like he looks nails, like you would not mess with him. I think just posing is really cool on the model. Um uh, I like I do like the Obi Wan Kenobi champion, company, company champion. You keep on calling him Obi Wan Kenobi. The does, pose is wrong. It does yeah. look like Obi Wan Ad, Kenobi. Ad did point out. Was it Ad or was it you? It was me. It's out, sideways. Uh, it's got to be sideways. No, no. The, he's, but he's it very was, much but it's more it's Aragorn. Very much, it, oh, oh, it's quite Aragorn. Yeah. 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 Maybe I think a hybrid of Obi Wan and Aragorn. That's a funny thing. But um, but maybe it it does look very much like Jedi kind of pose kind of thing. I think it's quite cool. Um, you know, Blade Guard are just sick in general. Yeah, yeah. I think what would be really cool is having the new company champion with the with the Palpatine. 
com- company champion that is like, the limited edition one or the one that came out. Those two models. They were, oh, with the, with yeah, the sword he's going doing very yeah. much the very much the Palpatine lightsaber stance. So, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, but that that command squad definitely for me. And I've got to say, as as you know, as a Blue Angel fan, the assault squads uh, or, or jump jump incessors. Um, jump assault. Uh, jump, no, sorry, assault, assault intercessors assault with, with, with jump, jump packs. packs. Yeah, yeah um, that's, I, I think that is the official term. Is assault incessors with jump packs. They look great. Like the sergeant with that forward forward uh, aims uh, power sword looks amazing. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really keen for that. Like it's it's something that for me, I think it's the thing when I saw it, it's the thing that tipped me over the edge. Like I've obviously got a first born Blood Angels army. Um, but it's the thing that's tipped me over the edge and like now that the, the true sort of like heritage of Blood Angels for me is actually a model form, not just intercessors or like things like the assault aspect of it. I think that's really made me go all in now on, on doing a Primaris force. So. That is kind of what I was waiting, like why I never did a Dark Angels force when Primaris launched it. That's kind of what I was waiting for was like Terminators and bikes and stuff. And now we've got that now and I've just have sort of moved on my interests on what I want to paint. But yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. Like, initially it was like, okay, certain chapters are catered for with this initial run of Primaris Marines, but the ones that have specific things like that built into them, yeah. well, that's their what identity w- were sort of left behind a little bit. That's what got into the into the Black Templars because that's not that never really would have been a pick of mine, but then they got their new models and that, yeah, that done it for me. So yeah. I have to just make a slight rewind. The guy with the heavy weapon, it's called like um in in the command squad. It's like that. It's like it's a pyro cannon. So it's like a double barreled version. I thought of it was pyro. a heavy bolt. Or no, it's um a there's a, there's a pyro cannon model. I can't remember which one it was. Oh, sorry, it's a stern guard. It's the alternate version. Yeah, no, it's the stern guard kit that you can that, that they released as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I thought it was in the command squad for a sec there. Um, but the 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 pyro cannon is it looks it looks absolutely solid. Like yeah, so that's your three. Yeah, my three command squads. Sky, Lord of Sky Four, the, uh, the the captain, uh, jump captain, and then the assault uh, assault incestors with jump packs. I think the, the yeah the the company heroes command squad thing does come into mind almost purely for the ancient. I just love that model. Like the the others are cool, but um, but the ancient. But ahead of those, I think I love. I probably will never paint this, and I don't really paint stuff like this anyway. But that like Trogoth model. I look great is incredible really cool. you're gonna like, see about 50 of them at gd i so. can't wait to see them at gd yeah. like it's there it's a 100 a gd yeah, entry will waiting to happen it will be um i've never tackled a model like that at all and maybe maybe it'll spur me on to try like a smaller version some of the smaller models in that range or something but yeah. those kind of model like that model just looks insane to me um and then two i think one that's gone under the radar that I love is the war cry from the war cry box. It's the hunter team. Oh, I saw those. Yeah, they are. I've been since the cities of Sigma reveal, I've kind of had a, a newfound interest for like some like human armies and stuff like that. And what they can do with human based models and things. Cause you don't obviously really get that in 40 K. Even the humans are like crazy. Um, like, built up space humans so um and in that that's in the that, best description ever. in that team <laughs> in that uh, in that team <laughs> in that team i was being distracted so i was trying to <laughs> anyway uh in that team you got four dogs as well you can't i'm not gonna oh uh, there is a pack uh, of dogs in dog there. Yeah, all four long. dogs and specifically within that team if you have a look at there's one model where the guy's crouching yeah i, I know what you mean yeah. sick model and um there's one where the guy has a dog like as part of his model. So cool. So cool. And then yeah, and then the other one's probably the company here. It's all about I'm surprised pets. neither of you have said Fulgrim. Uh, I, I think what, it's an obvious one. Like the models like, like it looks It was amazing. the grand finale, wasn't it? And it's yeah. like the one that everyone's talking about. Um for me, I think it is cool. It is very cool. But not not too much interest in Fulgrim as a character, so maybe didn't get too hyped I for see it that. personally. I do think the wings look a little too big in the in the uh in the well, no, they're smaller, that's what I'm saying. They're smaller in that one. Um the I, I, I like it. I, I think it's really good. It's it's good for me, I think the interesting thing is obviously that's a thirty K model, so that's him when he's demon formed at the Seeds of Terror. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting where 
it goes. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I just pulled up the picture of Fulcrum. The wings are massive. Yeah, do you agree the wings <laughs> yeah. are a little too big? They're uh, they're bigger than him. Mate, he's got a snake body. You've got to lift that off the ground. I guess like, so. He'll look like, I what's, get that, the what's that dragon in that, in that cartoon that's got like tiny wings? I can't think what it is. It's like a cartoon when I was a kid. That, that, that there's like a dragon. Are you talking about in Shrek where they're like the donkey? That's Shrek. the one. Yes. The, where the dragon's got donkey tiny. Donkey the dragon. Uh, yeah. Where the, where the dragon's got tiny, 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 tiny wings. wings. So it'd look really weird if he had like these like uh, unproportionated like sort of like wings. Did James seriously uh, just make a Shrek reference? Yeah, uh, uh, Shrek is completely out of my wheelhouse, if I'm honest. I've seen the first Either one. way, he needs big wings to lift that body. All right. He looks, he's stacked. I can't believe I'm talking about Shrek. The, the bit smash time. mouth Joe's, but yeah. He just died. He, he just did. died like this week, RP. Yeah. Um, um sorry, I brought the tone down a little bit. Yeah, little bit podcast. Yeah, little bit, yeah. Um yeah. we'll get back round to the demon. <laughs> what <laughs> lift, I'm, lift the what I'm gonna there. say is that it's really interesting what they've done with the 30k version because it it it's kind of like that's kind of like what the expectation of Fulgrim people have seen obviously the really OG kind of little model and then that like, there's been mentions of him in books and bits and bobs. So to see it in a model form is amazing finally. Um, but the interesting thing for me is what they're going to do with him returning in, 30, in 40k and how much different that model is going to look because I imagine it would look, they'd obviously got to make it look stylistically very different because of the progression of time. Um, so that's the interesting thing for me. It's like that's seeing him at Siege of Terror and let's just see how 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 further on he falls, uh, you know, falls to Sonesh and the way, the way it goes obviously with the 40k model. One thing I will say on it is I think that's the most 40k looking heresy model we've had so far like it looks like one of the demon primarchs from 40k yeah like potentially yeah normally you can tell the di especially with the primarch models you can mm. see the difference it looks like one of the it's the closest we've got in heresy to like a 40k looking I, model I think until, but people will use it as a demon prince and stuff until 100%. you sit in until you sit in hand though because if you look at horus ascended for example like that's only slightly bigger than the original horus model from from, from, from forge world so i don't think it's going to be like as big as like a 40k primark the plastic kits tend to be a bit bigger in scale in, not scale but just in size as in like they where they've grown more or whatever um so i think i think a 40k version will be yeah maybe it's a bit smaller than i, th I think it's smaller than you actually think it looks in the photo that basically. happens with Hard will tell for me. Yeah, I, yeah. I suppose they haven't got to like compete it. with like in terms of the range in Heresy. Like the models aren't generally as big, whereas like in 40k, you've got some massive models. I guess. It leaves some room for that difference yeah. that James is talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, yeah. I suppose. yeah. Is that one of yours then? Is that one of your? No, picks? it's not my pick. My Come pick's on, gonna run. be. What's your three? I'm going jump captain. Obvious pick. Good choice. Rogue one for me. Film. <laughs> More Star Wars. Yeah. Jesus. A, ro a rogue pick for me yeah. is uh, the Blood Bowl vampires. They look oh. great. They're really cool, actually. Yeah, I, I don't enough. like fantasy. I don't like vampires as a... Well, I mean, I like Blood Angels, but I don't whoa, like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. I don't yeah. like fantasy vampires. <laughs> and, I don't like, and I don't like Blood Bowl. Yeah. But I saw that squad and I'm like, these are sick. They, look, so they, cool. do, they do look so really, they're really cool. That might, uh, that might get me on the Blood Bowl. Now. I might have to pick them up. Right. And uh, I really like the old world. Um, I don't know the model name. It's the... Oh, the... the uh, like the woman on the yeah horse. on the horse yeah. Yeah. that was a really close one for me to almost uh, almost put that in square aces are back so. it just yeah, yeah like I'm not even particularly nostalgic for old world stuff like it was never my thing I mean I'm definitely not <laughs> but I like can, I, yeah I don't even know the years I mean by I the time I got again by the time I got back into it as an adult like obviously it was uh, just Sigma was around so I'm not particularly nostalgic for it but I saw that model and it just like felt nice to see do you know what i mean like i i don't know if the fantasy dating of like models and things stuff as well as i do 40k from from back in the day but um but i do recall the model uh and see an artwork of it it's, it's a really cool model um you know it's painted really well quite, uh, quite lord of the rings -y. it looks great honestly uh, honestly first glance i thought it was a, a middle earth yeah feel, until i read it yeah as i was scrolling yeah. through it was uh, great no, i was like oh what character is that i don't know yeah yeah no that model's sick that'd be, that'd be my pick i think do you want to go through some comments before comments, we get into yeah, the yeah. main thing? We've had a uh, start up a bit of debate on the old uh, on the last episode. We were mm -hmm. talking about uh, starting out in the hobby. People obviously threw in their two cents. So thank you everyone for commenting. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, Chris Atwood five nine three zero says, "I vote cheap brush to start, but not for too long." Yeah, I agree. Don't be fist pumping yet because there was someone in the comments as well. Yeah, we're not talking oh. about someone in the comments. We're talking about Chris Atwood 563 or whatever his name is. <laughs> and he said cheap brushes to start. No, I, I, this is basically what I was. Well, there is the caveat at. in there of the, the not for, not too, for long, too long. Not for too long, yeah. yeah. And I think that is kind of what I was getting at, but I think not for too long changes for, for everyone. Like, yeah. 
um, I think the point I was trying to get across is you'll know when you can or need to upgrade. Um, yeah. For most people, that won't be for too long. But yeah, I, I, that's kind of the point I was trying to get across. Well, you, in, in that vein, uh, Cabe Bedlam says, for gear, my advice is always, this is really good to this, for gear, my advice is always buy the best you can afford to ruin. Yeah. Uh, I 100% agree with James. If I'm you buy the now. if you buy the cheapest possible, you're going to fight it more than better brushes as a newcomer. You may not realize it's the brush that's at fault. Not saying you go out and buy some really nice Kalinsky, yeah. but also don't buy the 15 brush multi pack from the pound shop, which is not what we said. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, shot uh, glasses only from pound shop. That's fine. That's yeah, I need. will. I, I, that's. I think that's probably the perfect comment as a response to that. Um, that debate like the the by the best that you can ruin is perfect yeah i agree yeah yeah i think it's like i said as well it's like i think the cheap brushes has evolved quite a lot in recent times well, well we said it we said like you you can you can still buy a good mid-range brush that still is kalinsky and the cost point the price isn't isn't high like it's not a but in that vein price. as well you can go and buy like the the decent synthetics like you can buy yeah. some like winsor newton synthetic brushes in like you know the range or like a local art shop like two or three quid each yeah and they're still going to be like miles better than any multi-pack yeah. junk you can buy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my, my fear is just the, we, we, we don't want to assume, like we said on the last episode, we don't want to assume like a, an existing level of knowledge for any newcomer. Like you don't know to look after your brushes if you don't know you're supposed to know that. No, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. Grey Planet Hobby says, had a few friends get into 40K recently and it seems to have been mega for them to know the essential bits to have straight away like wet palettes, lamps, etc. They're getting models done and gaming with them way faster than I did when I first started learning it all from scratch. YouTube is a godsend, but some videos can also confuse things a little. Yeah, I agree totally. Yeah, I think that's again a, a few points we've again. That's almost like a mix of of two of the points that we made because one of the things I was saying is how much easier it is to have your hand held by someone and basically show you what the ropes are. Unless you're um, one of my friends, in which case I'm going to lead you down the yeah, wrong path. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then James was obviously saying about how kitting them out would... Like, I would be worried about overwhelming someone. So if I sat a friend down to paint for the first time and was like, right, you need... Here's this lamp. Here's a wet palette. Here's a, like before they've even built a model. I think I would be worried about overwhelming someone. But obviously it seems to be working for, for their friend group, which is cool. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to accommodate for a variety of needs and budgets. Whether you want a centerpiece character for your army or a full-blown gaming force, we have what you need and we offer well above the industry standard in terms of painting quality and our service. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of September, new clients can get 5% off of any commission using code SEPTEMBER5. So, should we talk about some bugs? We shall talk about some bugs. Some new bugs have come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots and lots and lots of bugs. <laughs> should, we, uh, should we skim through the new ones that are uh, yeah, on pre-order at the minute? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, we've got it first. Lictor. What do we think of the Lictor? I think it's needed a new model for some time. I like the fact that they've kept it quite in line with previous versions of the model, but I think that the posing options and the way them, they look more predatory is really good. Um, I didn't realize at first how many poses there are in the box. I thought it was literally just the one in the box. No, there's a few, there's quite a few, which is good. Um, yeah, like the day, I love the old Lictor model, don't get me wrong, it's like a classic, but they for something that is like an infiltrator unit, um, just standing there looking like he's waiting for a cab, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, is is like you know is um so to, to to have some haunched yeah that's basically it well that's what the arms are right? yeah, so, yeah. you know um so but the but the the new pose is like the, like for example this one you know the haunched pose the sort of like you know it's really cool and and I think it just really sells a bit more that what what that model does um you know and and it's and it's it's law narrative you know so so yeah I absolutely love it I prefer the standing pose I think yeah I don't I can't picture have you got Oh, I don't know. I think I like the one that the more crouched. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Split decision on that one. Again, it's yeah. like it's like it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. I suppose the standing yeah. one is more like the OG. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice that they got the cab pose, but like, but <laughs> um, I love but, that. That's but, just, but but just said it like it's a thing that people it. say. It's a thing people say. Yeah. But but like uh, it's yeah. I just think is that now it, what we're going to call like stoic poses. The cab it's pose. Got the cab pose. Yeah, the cab pose. yeah. Well, it's the old classic second in sword. Race, yeah, isn't it? yeah. Cab you know, pose. So. 
Yeah. There was, there was zero chance that if a Bud Angel came out in that pose, he'd be like, he's waiting for a cab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing both is great. And I think it gives, it lead, nodding to the heritage is really lovely and it's great. I'd say nostalgia is, is I think nostalgia is really important and, and heritage is really important with 40K. Um, but having having a bit of a different pose is also really, really good. Um, so yeah, new lictors are awesome. Um, yeah. Really keen on them. Neuro lictor. I, um, uh, look, it's cool. I'm going to preface this by saying I've never been a big Tyranids fan. And I know that's probably not a good way to start off like a Tyranid faction focused podcast. <laughs> but I've never been a huge Tyranids fan. Um, just the, the, the bug aesthetic never really did it for me. But everyone calls them bugs. I've never pictured them as bugs. They're more like lizards. They're, the, they're like the. I don't know about that. No, they're like bugs. They're bugs, dude. What do you mean lizards? They're like. I think I think you're probably you're probably thinking because they've got the armor. They, well, no, bugs and insects do have the carapaces so. as well. Yeah, like I, th- I understand why you would say that. I do get that. Like, but then the give me dinosaur vibes. A lot of these. I'm not gonna well, lie. no, I, I wouldn't agree. I, I think if you look at Seraphon as a range, for example, you definitely go. Well, they're they're lizards, you know. But yeah. with these, you wouldn't look it at depends, them. And go, it depends on the model. I mean, more in terms of like the, the like termagants and all that. I, I, think think get, also, I get that. Like you've got the the newer ones that are like looking like a little spider, or whatever. Sure. Yeah, um, but it's just. I think it's more just like a fun. Way to I'm gonna get quickly. rinsed for that in the comments. Just oh, quite probably are, yeah. I'm not <laughs> considering either. every person I've ever known that loves tyranids calls them bugs. Yes, you're gonna get yeah. rinsed. In the comments. Yeah. Feel bugs. free, feel um, free, feel free to comment now. It's just <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so but but the ones that I do like are the ones that have a bit more like so on the neurolictor, you know, you have the front bit with like the glow in brain, the brain, yeah. Like when they start going, like if you're gonna do it, just do it like I want like a load of. I don't know, just a bit more disgusting looking like bugs. Not stuff. Nurgle, mate. Come on. So having like, <laughs> having like, yeah, like the little like brain thing showing and glowing and stuff like that. I think it just makes the models a bit more interesting to me. But in general, it's just a cool. It is great. It's cool really, model. It's really, really cool. Um, that, uh, I can see that kind of tail bottom thing being used for a lot of uh, conversions for like the princes and stuff. People want to make their own Fulgrim or something like that. There's a, there's a lot of cool part. The thing is, it's really nice to see that they're they're pushing like pushing the range quite massively. Like when you saw like the the psychophage and stuff like that, and you saw some of the other models in the in the Viathan box. There's really nice nods to some of those models, so it keeps that kind of like keeps that kind of stylistic choice of the progression of the range. I think, which is really good. Um, yeah, I do think it's a great model. Um, you know, it's, it's just it's something new for for nid players to enjoy. So so yeah. Should we, should we save the big boy? Uh, Save the big boy to the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a new gene. We can stealers. do. Uh, let's do gene stealers and and Hormigans yeah, together, together maybe. So, it's the new infantry. Isn't it? So I, I I I'm going to say this right now. I think gene stealers uh, are quintessentially the most iconic Tyranid model, um, and that dates right back to to Space Hulk. Like I remember playing Space Hulk when it first came out, and like they were you were like petrified of them because of how they they literally made Terminators into tin cans. You know, so I guess because Space Hulk's never been a thing in like my era of the hobby. Yeah, I don't really think of it like that. When when was the latest Space Hulk? Oh, that's a good one. I'm gonna get uh, someone in the comments is gonna get this right. Did I'm they re- guess. Didn't they re-release it? Like the they did. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm sure it's yeah 2010 2011. I might be wrong. I can't remember the exact date. But in that full part, I thought it was part. later than that. But it, do you know, know what? I think I might change my guess. It's it was about ten years 20, ago. 2012. I'm gonna say 2012. It was about ten years ago. At least. Yeah. yeah. If you know the answer, yeah. put it in the comments. But I'm, yeah. I think it's 2012. I thought it was close to like. I'm going to get it even more wrong. I'm going to be quiet. Let's just but, keep. Let's just keep throwing yeah. numbers out there. Yeah. I'll go, uh, go, go to, <laughs> I'm going to go. It's the brown paint thing gonna, all over I, again. Yeah, I'm going to go 2012. I think is when it came out because I remember the box um, uh, had a big bit, a bit of. Bark. Irrespective of that though, like I've I've always thought of like uh, termagants and all that as like the the tyranny thing. G- see, jeans because of, because GSC back in the day, Road Trader and, and sort of like second ed, and then and then. Steelers are what um are what basically how a, a populace gets infected like one steeler all lands on a planet and infect the population basically like um that I think for me they've always been the most iconic model in the in the range and I think that that now that they've now that they've re- re-rendered them redone them they just look sharper they look more aggressive they look meaner that like some of the posing options look look really good as well um you know I think I think they're just it's really nice to see I think these new ones are probably my they're not going to top my favorite the steeler steeler sculpts. I think the space the ones in that space Hulk box are amazing, where they're like climb, climbing down gantries and they're doing. What's I, the, love, uh, I love those. What's ones. the other army in the space Hulk box? Terminators. Terminators. Yeah. What? Blood Angel Terminators. Oh, well, that's, yeah. 
convenient. Just trying to get to the bottom of why someone might like space hey, look, you, so yeah, no, no, I'm saying the Steelers in that box. They're, 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 <laughs> really, they're really cool. Do you know what this reminds me of is when they um, refreshed the Eldar and they had like new Guardians and all that. It's yeah. basically just exactly what you want. But they look they, they look right? so yeah. crisp. Like the, the the quality of the sculpt and the and the crispness of the models just looks amazing in the in the images that I've, that I've seen. Um, but yeah, I think that you you know I think they're they're phenomenal. They're really really good. Um, I'm, it, ex- I'm excited that the uh, the formal gods aren't going to fall over now. <laughs> yeah, that was um that that's like one of the most like spoiler that we'll talk about getting our hands on some of them in a minute. But that was like one of my most surprising things, especially on like the the ones that are leaning forward and stuff. It's like, oh, they, they just stand, stand really perfectly. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I had, no, one... don't need to put some like pennies under the base to no. lay them down. I, I had one, one of the ones that I painted, um, it, it, it looked like a drunk Essex lad on a Friday night. Like it has in like, it was staggering, you know, um, as all the running <laughs> that he's doing. And, um, and the, even, even with it in that pose and that sort of like really like fast attacking pose, it still stood up really well. Um, Again, I, I think Hormigan's been around a long time as a model, right back to second ed. I th- I, yeah, the progression of the model has been great over the years, but I think these new ones, just the ease of putting them together, the variation of posing, the really aggressive nature of them as well, which just looks great. Um, yeah, they're phenomenal. I, 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 How do they attach to the base, the new ones? Have they got like a little peg thing? Yeah, they've, got, they've, all, they've all got tactical items on the base, basically. They've all got like rocks. Yeah. So right. it's like, yeah. like a flat... Um, it's literally just a flat surface that you can just glue. Uh, it's not like one of the bases that has the little hex cut out. It's not. No, nope. no, they're really good. They're not really on the good. one that I had. No, I don't think any of them did the ones we saw. We did the big boy, Norn yes. emissary. What a model! This is very cool. What a model! Um, I'm going to get annihilated in the comments for pronouncing the next name. I'm going to say, but there was a Forge World nid called the Dimericon. I think it was called. I don't know exact pronunciation, but you can you can. I'll throw it on the screen. Yeah. yeah. It, that that obviously is no longer available as far as I'm aware. And, and I think this thing kind of like fits that gap really nicely. It's what, like it's just such an imposing model. It's like, just one of those things that whatever army you collect, you want something like that. You want every army wants the big, really cool thing. Like, it's, it's just cool it's that like every sentiment. army can get one. Like uh, it's it does look so cool. It's that instantly, I think if if. I don't know how it's going to be in game or whatever. I assume it's going to be a bit of a beast, but instantly, if you put like an army down on the table, that's going to be the first thing that people look at. I think it. You, I think it's a great paint. It's, I think it ticks loads of boxes for gaming. Obviously, look, I don't know the rules. It's going to be horrendous, undoubtedly, um, uh, in a good way. That is, um, uh, but for, as a painting, painting thing, it's like a phenomenal centerpiece model, super imposing, very aggressive looking. It fits the Tyranid narrative really well. Um, yeah, I, I I back it hard. It's it's solid. It looks to me from the images like the perfect model for not too intimidating for a newbie, but also loads of space to I get go what you hard mean. if you're yeah, a I good painter. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. I think, although if it's too much of a newbie, they might run into the same issue I had with Mortarion <laughs> that we got on to last week. But um, which there was a comment that that had like a similar issue to me yeah, with yeah. Mortarion. Um, so I'm not alone. Um, but yeah, I get what you mean. It, as far as those models go that I was just describing, it does look like one of the more approachable ones, painting wise. I think. I think you. Get, I think nids in general. I think there's a range. Like they're they're fun to paint as well. Like I had a blast painting the ones I did. Like they're they're re- they're they're really great little models or models to paint because of the more biological. I mean, if you want to speed paint them, contrast paints are literally made. Yeah, they're they're them. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, really good. Um, you know, you can snap chop him till 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 the space holes are breached. You know, so they're, they're the what? space hulk have breached. Oh. Yeah, so it's ticking a uh, ticking some brain boxes for you, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, it's got a few little exposed bits. <laughs> That's a bit of a tactical weakness, <laughs> that though, showing the brain. Uh, well, for most people, for for some people, the brain is the uh, deadliest weapon they can have. So. <laughs> <laughs> Armed with a mind, mate. Armed with a mind. That is true. Yeah. All right. So obviously we got got our hands on some of these. Uh... We did get our hands on some of them a little bit early. Yeah. Um, we didn't get to paint all of them. Obviously, we didn't get to paint the the non emissary because it was just too much of a task. We wanted to get a few, quite a few others. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There, there, there was a nice selection we managed to get done in, in time as well, which is great. Um, do you want to go first with your 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 bad boy? Yeah, did me the uh, did me the death leaper. Yeah. I wasn't a Tyranids fan, 
wasn't not a Tyranids fan. I was just sort of kind of indifferent to them. And then when they announced, that was the one they showed first, wasn't it? Uh, when they got the, uh, how many followers they hit on Instagram. Mm-hmm. That was when they released that one. Yeah. yeah. And I know James doesn't like the, uh, the little skirt he's got going I, on. I, do you know what? I'm going to say this now. It's actually grown on me the more I've looked at it. I've had quite a few opportunities to look at it what, since you, you, you finished it. And, 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 and again, it's that thing of looking the model in the flesh. Like when you see it in a picture. As a I thought object. it was going to say in the eye. For some reason, when he said that, looking the model in the eye <laughs> and judging it, man, to man. squaring up to me, Joe. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like you know, um, uh, I'd know, I'd have no chance. Um, the, the, the 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 thing is, is uh, when you see it in the hands, I think that um, a two D image doesn't always give you the true reflection of 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 not just the pose, but also the way that all the parts and things work together. So seeing it together, ad- admittedly at first, I I wasn't too keen on the on the on the cape because I I don't know, I just. I don't know what to call it, really, skirt, cape, or whatever it is, you know. But um, when you see it in the flesh and you see the way that it's, like, wrapping around the model to show a bit of movement as well, I think it just works really nicely. Um, yeah, it's, it's just something a bit different as well. That's, that's exactly the thing. That's why it stood out to me because it was, like, just that little bit different. Like, it's still everything, you know, and love from a tyranny. Like, it still looks like a tyranny. But it's just a bit different from the range. It's not like a lictor in a slightly that, that's, a, that's a really good point because the thing is he is just like a, a, a you know um a souped up lictor so if he didn't have it, it it would just look like a bigger version of the inherent lictor and i think having it just gives him a little bit more of a regalness to him i think that's the best mm. way to explain it um but yeah i mean for those wondering he is bigger than a lictor yeah right? he is he's massive yeah like yeah um I think it, it, yeah, is the actual obviously standing on that thing, but is the actual the actual body? Model, yeah, the, if you look at the, the body is, and the body, is bigger it's slightly anyway. bigger. I'd say it's like sort of twenty percent bigger, maybe. Yeah, that's um, great. obviously looks a lot taller because he's on the big base, which is awesome. Yeah, we need more sculpted bases on the uh, yeah on what is not I, I suppose not too special of a model. Like obviously it's still it's a character not, model. It's but, a character model, but, but it's not like a Primark. Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. Um, that's good to see. I, I think, um, like I said, it's just a bit different. Like that was that was what kind of drew it to me. Um, chose to do box art, uh, High Fleet Leviathan, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not good at painting, <laughs> painting <laughs> organic things. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare with that model, being honest. Yeah. Not not even to do with the model, just me as a painter. I just don't really. I I think I just paint a lot of Armor. mechanical, manufactured. But that's good though, because it means you get. You, I mean, you, look, look, all you painted it really well. It looks great. Thank you. And and, Thank you. and putting you outside your comfort zone, which is something that we talk about all the time about painting something different than what you inherently normally do. So then it makes you learn other things um, as a painter. It, it it's good, you know. Like, like I've seen loads of armor stuff you painted, and then seeing that, like you, you've done great on it. Like all the, the all the sort of glazed areas on it look amazing. And and I think that when when it comes to approaching this if you're getting your models is that you know if you're getting these new too many models and you're painting them like you sh- you should really try and push yourself and i think you've done that in what you've what you've achieved with it how did you approach it in terms of like the order that you tackled it like what did you spray um did you go for the the armor color or the so the purple armor is technically black in terms of its like base color like it's basically even if you look at the gw box art for leviathan yeah it's black highlighted with purple and that makes it read as like a nice dark purple mm-hmm. um fill the model i did initially pin him to the base so i could pull it off because i wasn't yeah. too sure i was going to approach the base. so basin so i built the whole thing the only thing i left as a sub assembly sorry joe is the head uh, just because some of the tendrils on the face sort of block your brush access just a little bit so a little pro tip for you if you're going to build one of them maybe leave the head separate um spray the whole thing black and uh no, I didn't. I didn't do that. I sprayed. I sprayed it all black. Realized what an error it was going to be when I started base coating all of the skin. All the skin, yeah. So I went in with the airbrush, yeah. and I, I quickly uh, did it all with. I think it was wraith bone. Um, yeah, done it all wraith bone with the airbrush, and then just just started blocking in uh, back with the black and all the carapace and all the armor, and then three or four mental breakdowns later, <laughs> glazing in some uh, <laughs> some of the fleshy tones. The thing is, like, if you're now, it's like the the. James A. cast the yeah. meme of started making it. Yeah. Had a breakdown. <laughs> bon bon appetit. Appetit. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to approach another one though, another t- another Leviathan model, you'd you know, a high fleet Leviathan, you'd have way more ability to just hit the ground running with it because of the experience. Yeah, I would have bought a Wraith Bone spray. <laughs> 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 
that's the best tip ever. Yeah. Um, I think so keeping it separate as well works nicely because then you've got those two, you've got lovely metallic base with all those little details. It gives you two, almost two sort of painting projects within one piece, which I think is quite a nice thing as well. Um, but yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, I mean, the, the base was a cakewalk, not going to lie. It's more in my wheelhouse. Oh, in, in your wheelhouse, of, uh, yeah. So while you were having that mental breakdown, the base was the, the, I did the recovery. Go back, I did, for, a little, for a little cheap win, I like to do this sometimes where like, I'll, I'll go back to something I know I can do handily. Just so I can tick a box and be like, don't mind. Like, don't yeah. mind. <laughs> it also, yeah. I also feel like, I don't know if you ever do this, sometimes I'll do the base on a model just to make it feel like I've gotten more finished than I have. I like I said, it's such a cheap win. You paint a base in like 10 minutes. It is, yeah. And all of a sudden the model looks so much more finished. 100%, I just always yeah. like to remind myself when I get to a certain point of a model, like if I just do the base, most people would be happy to game with this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be, it's fine. Like yeah. if I get like first stage edge highlight done or something, finish the base and then I'm like, it's, it's done. Yeah, you're like, anything now is just extra. Yeah. yeah. Now it's now there's no pressure. Yeah. Because yeah. it's done. Yeah, it does yeah. help. Painting the base does help. And I, I I normally do it halfway through a miniature. I'll get loads done and then I'll be like, right, let's get the base done. And they look more done. Yeah, it's a good little good little I'd trick. say the um surprisingly, the sort of cloth skin skirt, whatever you want to call it. That I didn't find too much of a challenge. It felt a lot like just painting a normal cape on like Because a you probably paint you paint a lot of capes anyway, like on captains and bits and bobs. Some me a few capes. Yeah. yeah. Some me a few capes, yeah. Um, most difficult bit for me was on the back tail there. Um, I'll throw images on screen. There's a lot of blending going on. So the central bit. Yeah. 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 Bit, yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to copy the box art. Like I said, good chance to push myself. A bit out of my comfort zone anyway. So mm. tried to get as close to the box art as I could. Hopefully I did okay. It's always the, the difficult thing with these preview models as well is that like you want to push it as far as you can. Yeah. But you're on a time limit. Well, yeah. also because when we do the, the preview stuff, there's no... GW web images yet, so there's no 360. There's no box art. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, that obviously there is box art as in you've got the box. You've got, yeah. the, you've mean, got the golden angle. Yeah, yeah, but it that made me realise how much. Well, again, like I, I, I only did one of the office team, same as James, one of the office team challenge. Uh, Hormigans. Hormigans that we'll get to in a minute. Um, I, I actually because that we split those up, I didn't have the box. So I didn't have any box art. I just had the web images to go off of. And it made me realize how much I value when I'm painting, looking at other people's work 360, looking yeah. at the, the box art 360, just to check, like, is that a thing? Or bit is of that, armor. Is that a bit or of armor? Is that, or is that skin? Or is, yeah. that skin yeah. or is that like, oh, how should that be metal? Or should that be, like, whatever it is. Um, never even really thought about how much I must check. That gives that. me so much respect for the people who actually paint the box art because they haven't got that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the other two, like obviously the the big boys that we got to, um, weren't painted by any of us. Um, we had Adam paint the biovore. the biovore, and Rosie did the the lictor. Yeah. Um, we could talk about the biovore then, which is in behemoth. joining joining the behemoth hive fleet that we painted for the Leviathan that was also done by Adam. Yeah. So it's exactly the same as the Leviathan uh, nids that you saw us do in the in the Tyranny video that's on the channel. Um. I'd approached it with the exact same color palette. So all the colors you'd expect, so obviously for the reds, for example, Mephiston, like with soft shades of like corn and then Baragnar Burgundy. Um, and then all the chitin or chitin, whichever way you pronounce it, uh, was done black first with Inky V as the first stage highlight and then went up through a blue spectrum. So a, different, a couple of different blues. I believe that we used Inky V as the first edge highlight, then done um, Thunderhawk, I think it is, and then finished it with, I think it might be Loathen, I think, but I'll have to check that it's yeah. another good example of what you what george was saying about how the arm is actually black yeah yeah and then it's just highlighted with blues, so that yeah. it reads like a dark blue or yeah or, or whatever yeah um, i'll just quickly throw it in because you mentioned colors just in case anyone asks just to get ahead of it it's uh for the leviathan one it's base coated black uh the first highlight is uh nagaroth knight uh then it's gene stealer purple uh, and then I mixed in a little bit of administratum grey and then I dotted it with white. Yeah. Yeah. Um like I said, if you if you're watching this and you've got your models and you know and you're starting to build and, and hopefully those those uh those kind of schemes will help you. Um but yeah, no, they're very much in keeping with the rest of the, the uh I mean adds a adds a big tuned fan anyway. So um so adding that to the his behemoth uh, army and the rest of the news he's had for Leviathan as well is is, is what he wanted to do with it. Really cool model. I think it's great. It does come with uh, with uh, three of the little. Um, I forgot what they're called. Oh, Joe like them little brain boys. Little, little, little yeah. sport, the spore I was, I was just eyeing up. He's got a little bit of exposed uh, sort of brain 
bit on the top. Oh, I'm not going to lie. Right. Okay. That I looks feel like, like I've hammed up how much I like that on Tyranids already because I'm not that fussed about it, but I just think it adds a bit of interest. I think my, cause my initial thing with Tyranids was that like, oh, it's a bit boring. They all look the same. So when I started to see ones that had like bits like that. But that's his biggest weapon, Joe. He's it got the massive true, cannon, but that's his true. biggest weapon. True, yeah. yeah. It's it, mine. It, it does come. It does come with uh, a couple of spore <laughs> mines as well, which is quite good. And I painted those, um, which which are really cool. Um, so yeah, but it's really nice to see the, the, the Biovorus model has changed quite massively over the years. Like from it used to be like a like almost like a, a creature that had a gun mounted to its back, but like in a more like kind of sitting pose. It looks more spider like now, which I think is really cool. Yeah, it, fair enough. Not to dig myself a deeper hole, but that does look like a spider. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> It's very. Um, Feel free to chuck it in the comments again. Why they are? They are. Yeah, look at this lizards. classic lizard uh, lizard shape. <laughs> right. If you, we'll get onto it in a minute. But if you look at some of the hormigons that we've done, they're a bit lizardy. I think that's more painting than sculpt. To be honest, George. Well, we'll get, yeah. Uh, it is. It's cool. It's like a tyranid uh, equivalent of like the the venom crawler and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Like everyone needs a little bit of a. Spider creepy bug. crawly spy, spider spider unit. lizard yeah, yeah spider lizard everyone needs a classic lizard unit and yeah. like the venom crawler yeah <laughs> that classic lizard <laughs> um then, yeah then, i think it's cool then, then we've got the fight the final one which is the lictor um and again really really high high contrast scheme where you've got the softer lighter tones and rose has done a great job on this obviously just by picking out all the details on the model in the various segments of the chitin or chitin whatever you may pronounce it um and obviously the soft the one thing i did really like about it is that she kind of took the kraken scheme a little bit further by adding the mottle in around the tops of the joints and close to the the chitin or chitin whatever you call it again um you can just pick one i know you don't I, have to do that every single time yeah i'll yeah. just say just say armor yeah i always thought it would a bit because doesn't isn't it like a play on the word keratin i don't know i have no idea i literally oh, don't okay. know i have no idea i might be wrong what are you referring to the armor yeah the armor yeah, yeah. i would just say armor yeah or carapace okay so or the carapace yeah so carapace I, I i really yeah. like how literally she's... any other word basically <laughs> or just add those two options into the two options that you're already giving people so you can rattle off all four of them every yeah. time if you want right i'm just gonna go for one and we go carapace <laughs> uh, so make it easy can't get that word wrong um but yeah i like the way that there was like a mottling almost like a not leopard but like a little spotting kind of pattern that she's put yeah, toward, that. towards towards the the carapace sections which i think is great um but again high contrast so very similar sort of reds you know the armor again it looks like um uh, black's been used and then reds have been used to highlight and there's also a bit of a transition from from the darker reddy area to the to the uh, sorry darker black area to the red which i think is nice but again going up through the spectrum of like um mephiston reds uh your evil sons and then potentially wild rider even to like if you wanted to you could push it and do like orange dots on the brightest bit tiny bits as well and then really soft tones for 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 the for the fleshy areas so picking a really nice warm um sort of like fleshy color which i think works quite nicely it's almost like a like flesh is like bone color yeah right? yeah yeah which does make it look warmer obviously because it's like shaded with like browns and oranges and yeah it makes the mottle in the other carapace that is what i think well. out of the main hive fleets that's my favorite color scheme I really think. Oh, okay. yeah oh. it, it just for me like i can't even pinpoint why exactly but for me when i think of a tyranny i think of of a kraken this is the mm. stepping stone to the blood angels james this is where we're getting no do you know what i i actually no, no, I, the blood angels could have got me with red straight away because i love i think red armor and everything is great they lost me when they're just they're just so he'll, he'll admit it rubbish. He'll, he'll, he'll admit it one day, it's fine. <laughs> they lost um, me when I actually started reading about them. I was like, oh, vampires. He, he, he'll, admit uh, it, vampires. He, he'll admit it one day. Uh, I, I actually, pref I, out of the three, out of three out of those high fleet schemes, I, Behemoth is the one that I've always liked. Uh, I've always liked Behemoth. Yeah. I just, we hate yours, George, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with yours. I just, I just, yeah, I just, I've always, I've always just liked Behemoth. Um, no, that's fine. If you want to be, if you want to be wrong on the podcast, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We yeah. didn't even plan that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't even plan that. Sorry. Yours yeah. is really nice as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good, you picked the model that I like the most out of all of them. Yeah. You're, not, that, you're not digging your way out. If that, <laughs> if that helps. Not um, really, actually. No. Yeah. And I like... Um, I like his little skirt. You're just trying to think of something <laughs> nice. <laughs> <to> <laughs> say, <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, so we also had an awesome challenge in in office, didn't we? We had we had something that. Um, well, you lot did. I was busy painting him. Yeah, yeah. You, you were you were yeah flitting between armored armored base and and, and model. Um, but but yeah, we done. We, we thought we were really cool to get loads of people from the office to paint Hormigan each, um, just to 
number one, come up with a whole myriad of different schemes, um, and also at the same time, just just really show how flexible the the, the sort of like the, the sculpt and the kit is and what you can do with it. Did you all collude on color schemes, or is it just no. like you all no, picked we, a different no. color scheme? We, we so basically we obviously some people painted more than one, yeah. So it wasn't like eight individuals, but um, we all basically knew that it had to be a custom color scheme. And we did kind of like as and when people were deciding, they were just sort of saying, "I'm doing, I'm this. doing roughly like, oh, uh, you know, like green." You, you had your mint one that you knew pretty, pretty yeah. soon, so you were like, "Oh, I'm doing like mint green with da da da." So then everyone else knew not to choose that. So we did like there was a bit of a conflab about like, but it was as simple as that. It wasn't like sharing pictures with each other and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. or like specific colors. It was literally like, oh, "I'm doing a green and yellow one." Oh, I'm okay. I won't do a green and yellow one then. Gotcha. Um, and that's how I somehow ended up uh, with the Terminator idea <laughs> one, Terminator which one. just did work at all. But I think it came it's out the right, weirdest, actually. weirdest lizard I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I it think was, fun. it was just an idea that that uh, you always wanted to put metallics on Tyranids, and you're like, I've I just never thought, seen it. I just thought I haven't seen it. I'm, I mean, it's definitely been done. Like, and there's hardly anything you can come up with now where it's like, yeah, it's not been done. I just hadn't seen. I liked the idea of it being like a mechanical Tyranid instead, just as, as like a one-off thing. Um, On the route of like Necron kind of thing. Yeah, but just with like skin, or more, more like... Well, that's um, why I said Necrons, they've got some like organic... Yeah, true, stuff. yeah, yeah. Really... I, mean, I mean, I was thinking more of like a, like a rocket raccoon, like <laughs> like just bodged together from an actual animal so, so like to a, look like... A bit, a bit like Necron flayed ones where they've got skin over them. Yeah, 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 kind of. And then... Um, I painted it and realized why people haven't done it, to be honest. Um, yeah. Do you know what's funny as well? Like, I saw it instantly as soon as. Not that I don't think anyone would paint Hormigants with, with sub assemblies, although I would say you li you could quite easily if you wanted to, because the arms do just like pop out and pop on. Like, it's. it's of very all easy. the models, I would have thought you would succumb to the sub assembly. You pick a Hormigant. No, 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 I'm not succumbing to it. I didn't do it, but I'm just saying. If you wanted to, I don't know if people would on Hormigants, but it's so easy, isn't it? The way that the arms the way, go on. I think they're six like, pieces. They're they literally like, so easy. like, you could just leave the arms off and they, they just slot in. So you could if you wanted to, but what I'm getting at is I obviously didn't. And obviously on the picture that went up, there's a big, massive, like, on the on one of his like metal claws, on the inner side of his metal claw, there's a big like splodge of like wash or something. Where I've put my brush in to get like into his like pit basically on the skin and it's gone all over it's gone all over the metal claw. And if I was doing it as a sub assembly, that wouldn't have happened. So I did think it was funny that I've spent this whole podcast um belittling sub assemblies and then the pitch went up and I was like, Well, if I was doing it in sub assemblies, that wouldn't have happened. My my favorite bit of when you was uh, when you was all painting those was <laughs> one morning we came into the office and I said, "Oh, how are you getting on with the hormigons, Joe?" And you looked at me and you just went, <laughs> <laughs> "No, do you know what it was as well?" It's normally when I'm sitting down to, to paint a model, I I don't know if everyone does this, but I do like try and fully plan it first. Like I need to know it's gonna stress me out if I don't know the exact steps that I'm gonna take on each part of the the model and i didn't do that with this because again one similar to james like i had a particularly i think we had two weeks or something yeah we did around... we had two weeks to do it yeah and i had one evening of that two weeks Fine. that was actually i was free i was going to be at home the rest of, this is I, like when you get six weeks to do like your school project and you leave it till yeah, the night before i had <laughs> it was it was a particularly like Busy couple of weeks anyway. Joe's was, not in bands anymore, but he went to more gigs in two weeks than someone who's in a band. I, was out, I might as well have been on tour. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was out just by complete accident, signed myself well, up for too many things. You accidentally went to a no, gig. No, no, no. Like, like, oh, silly six, me. Last night, what like, my life? Like six, <laughs> Stumbled in again. Like six months ago, just going, yeah, yeah, I'll go to that. Get a ticket. And then like, whatever. I ended up with too many things to do in the space of two weeks. I had one evening th uh, free. and. Um, said, yeah, yeah, I'll do a do a Hormigan. And I didn't plan it properly. I was just winging it. I was doing this weird metallic thing. It was a great time to experiment. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I don't think it was like particularly bad the end result, but it was, it was fun. Like it was fun getting to make the new model and contributing to it. But it's good. I would not recommend um, doing the metallic two and thing unless you're going to spend a lot of time on it. I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we, uh, Eric, Eric from the team done three, and he he, he picked some really cool, uh, really cool sort of different options. There was one that had like, like tribal markings on it as well, which is quite cool. Go on, cool. say it. Uh, what do you mean? On on the carapace? <laughs> <laughs> on the carapace? Yeah, or chitin, or chitin, or, uh, <laughs> or armor, or armor. Yeah, um, but no. Uh, so yeah, Eric done three really awesome different schemes, which are great. Um, it he was wanted just, to base his on like real insects, real insects. So all the patterns yeah. he pulled from real insects, yeah, which so kind of look, kind of look like lizards, you could say. Mm. Mm. Insects. Yeah. The thing is, Eric <laughs> loves painted like seraphons. Seraphons, yeah. yeah. So yeah, which is fair. Um, I yeah, feel so like he'd make a space marine look like a lizard if he had the opportunity. Great, to. go for it. Yeah, yeah. Eric paint a space marine like a lizard. <laughs> yeah, um, they were really good. Like, and they, they again really um, more desaturated tones as well, which I think was quite nice. I, I went the, the complete opposite end of the spectrum to what Eric done. I went bright as hell, uh, and, and Eric went a bit more desaturated, which is more natural. Um, I think the ones that he done, which was great. And then one of the eyes as well. I noticed on one of his, he done like, loads of little white dots in the eyes. And yeah, it, that was insane. It was, it was crazy. Like, really, a few people pointed yeah, that out in was, the comments. Was, I didn't even if you, if you saw one of those. Real life, that would scare the yeah, that would scare the life out of you. That pretty scary, yeah. yeah. Um, it's the most like plausible forty k thing I've ever seen. If you get one, if you get what I mean, yeah, yeah. They, it looks like it could be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they look like real life insects, but on models, which is, which is pretty cool um, as well. Which is great. Lizards, uh, insects. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. Um, uh, I done the normal and just went dug out an old, uh, super old. Need codex. I think it's actually the codex that has got this artwork on the on the front of it. Um, and I just picked. I, really, I knew I wanted to do a mint one. I don't know why. I just thought that I I really wanted to do a mint mint colored one and give it like a Caliban High green. Fleet Aquafresh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> High Fleet Aquafresh. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I wanted to do like a sort of like a Caliban green, Dark Angels green kind of carapace on it as well, armor or chitin, chitin, whatever you call it. Um, uh, so I went down, I went down that route with one <laughs> and then the other two were actually old schemes. You know, remember the old codexes, you get like loads of different schemes as examples. And I, there were two that I just went, like, I really want to do that one. Really want to do that one. I do like new takes on them, but like in, in, on the new models, um, just to show a bit of heritage back to the old codex, which I think was quite nice, uh, or nod back to the old codex. The rules to the challenge, by the way, come up with a custom scheme. And the first thing he does is whip the out first, a book. The excuse first thing me. he does, excuse all me. three of these were excuse old. Me. No, 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 excuse me. The mint one was my custom scheme. And then I had two others to paint. So I was like, right, I'm going to do a little bit of heritage. Always so what you're saying is you did it 66% yeah. wrong. Correct. Always yes. bending the rules. Yeah. Always. Can't just go with it. Still still got one done uh, in the in, uh, as per the guidelines of the, of the exercise. Um, the, the other two, the other two. <laughs> GCSEs? Yeah, yeah. The other two, the other two. <laughs> As per the guidelines of the exercise. Yeah, exactly. The other two... Um, Why does it get so political on this podcast? Yeah. It's got these like, really like, tactically worded yeah. responses, isn't it? Look, okay. Was right. it the, the I demographic still, of I friends? Still, <laughs> yeah, you're a friend in the yeah. demographic of I friends. I still got three painted, which is the most important true, thing. True. So um, we obviously had two weeks or so to get How was that the most important thing? The most important thing was to do it in a different color. Uh, yeah, I just said true and I don't even agree with it. I don't know why. I'm just going along with it. Go on. I got three done. That's what matters. Um, and then the other two I picked from an old codex, uh, but I give them modern modern takes. So one of them was like a black black scheme that then where the joints came together, they had like a red striations and kind of like spotting towards the the the, the joints. I really liked it. Um, I was just trying to paint blood angels in the FD. That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the reality of it. Um, uh, and yeah, I had a lot of fun painting that one. And then the other one, uh, there was this amazing blue to purple like shifted color scheme in the, in the old codex um so i've done this uh this uh, blue to blue to blue to purple kind of like transition with the airbrush and then done all the cap base blue and then it like could use like uh primary color like yellow to then basically complement the blue etc so yeah it was really, really fun like they were really great and i just went super vibrant and bright with them because i think because because i knew that obviously eric was going to be doing something a bit more organic and taking real life reference and putting it on the mm-hmm. models which is great uh, I wanted to go the other end of the spectrum and go as crazy with color as possible. So yeah, mint, mint, mid. And we uh, have Paul's one as well. Paul's one, yeah, Paul's, yeah. So, so 
green. Yeah, yellow and green, which is a great scheme. Paul 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 works here in in, in the uh, in the studio. Obviously, does a lot of our stores and packing and stuff. And and um, he does paint quite a lot uh, himself. He's a big fan of Nurgle. First time um, I'd ever seen anything he's painted though. Yeah, Kept that quiet. Yeah, that's first time I've seen him. Yeah, he's yeah. He, he paints he paints a lot of Nurgle, so he's he's a big fan. Everyone's of like Dexter's secretly art. a really good painter around here, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's surprising to me it's, for a paint uh, studio. It's, but. Yeah, but if you're, again, speaking as the only person at this table who works at the company that isn't a painter for the company, it is intimidating. Like, Paul's done great, though. Show, I know, no, I'm saying, but I, it is in, it's intimidating to show you lot, even though everyone's going to be nice about it or, like, encouraging. It so is still George, a thing. George just call like, it a lizard. That's what it would do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, it is, yeah, it is. So, um, <laughs> but, it is intimidating. So, that's why it's like, I think people hold it back a little bit sometimes, like the on the office side yeah. of things. Yeah, Paul, he done great. Like, and he said picking picking green, you know, was really cool. Um, like I said, he, he that was like a little homage to his uh, his Death Guard. Yeah, so he yeah. wanted to basically do like a almost a Death Guard inspired Tyranid, which I think is great. Um, I can yeah. get behind that. Yeah, and, like uh, that. yeah, he's a big fan of Death Guard. Yeah, so he done he done great as well. And it's just it was really nice to get eight different schemes that we could share with you know with the community and and just maybe you know you. You, you saw the post and saw one of those schemes and you and that and uh, you know the thing that we were talking about in the previous episode where like nids for me was i think i really struggled i really struggled painting because i just i've tried so many times to do an army and i just can't pick up a scheme and i actually managed to paint three which i i actually enjoyed painting has that gotten you any closer to picking i'm up still not painting a nid army no. yeah i was gonna say like, <laughs> for me um first time i'd ever painted a tyranid I've never, t- I've never touched a. Tyranid I mean, I've never before. painted a Tyranid other than speed painting some for a couple of videos. Yeah, I've yeah. never done, never done anything like that, or like even like, you know, like a dead Tyranid on a base or something. Like yeah. I've never painted anything like that before, so it was a completely new thing for me. Yeah. The models are really nice, though. They, if, they, I can imagine if you're painting an army, like, and that's the models that you get to work with as your like infantry. It's quite cool. I think they're brilliant. Quite, quite, you yeah. said the thing with the base it just reminded me you didn't even paint the base the. The Screamer Killer on the base of your Terminator, did you? No, it isn't. No, uh, well, Ad was painting it anyway, so I just let him get on with it. He wanted, yeah, he wanted to paint nothing wanted... to do with the fact that you were too scared to paint it. <laughs> it probably was that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he was still Tyranids were still his, his nemesis, uh, yeah, his bogey yeah, on like, so like bogey man, yeah, like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, question of the week time. Thank you everyone for leaving your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on the show, please leave it in the comments. We've got one this week. Do you paint anything besides minis, like paintings, drawing, or sculpting, etc.? Uh, I mean, I, I used to paint as a kid, like on just rolls of uh, blank uh, wallpaper. I used to sit in the garden painting as a kid. So I, I, I suppose... is that the thing where he said, "Before I might get like chucked out in the garden, chucked out in the garden, <laughs> like a feral." I didn't little... literally get thrown out in the garden. Like Mowgli from the yeah, album, yeah, right? literally. I, I, I just, I just. I painted in the garden rather than, than, I don't know why my parents decided to do that. They just put me out there to paint because it was I think summer. You, it, it's, it's that, you specify, to... I think you specify the garden because of that picture. That picture is yeah, the main thing. Yeah, there's a picture of me as a like, kid. It's you in the garden. So yeah, yeah. Um, you probably painted inside sometimes as well. I probably imagine. did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but obviously that, that's the, that, I suppose that photograph that my, my parents took is just, it's just yeah. That, that's the me, memory. That's, that's like, the memory yeah. of it, you know. Um, and uh, so I used to paint bits and bits. I was always into art as, at school. So like art was something I took at GCSE and also at A level and stuff. And like I, I just always enjoyed. It. So I, I, I don't paint. I can't paint canvases or anything for Toffee nowadays. I can't. It's not something I'm capable of doing. Um, but I, I did do that in the past. But I think once I found miniatures in three D form, I just, I just, it, it's really because you can manipulate it as you and hold it as you're painting it and change the angle and everything. And that's the same even with Airfix, which is what kind of was my gateway into miniatures for my granddad. Like, um, yeah, I, I don't. I've, I, I think the moment I got into Airfix, like painting on other stuff, just went out the window for me personally. Like, um, I would love to sit and paint canvas, but I, I wouldn't know where to start. Like, you know, uh, I need to watch plenty of Bob Ross videos. I think. You know, Talk so. about putting yourself out of your comfort zone. I don't think anything could put me out of my comfort zone more than giving me a canvas and some paints. I, mm. I, I'm. This is the only art thing I've ever really done, like in terms of. I mean, I, I did music and stuff. If you want to get into a conversation about what art is, that's not really the scope of this. But mini painting is like kind of like you said, like having that physical 3D thing that's kind of pre-done for you. They've done the hard bit. Um, I don't even dabble in like sculpting would be something that would be nice to get into, like because it would relate so nicely to the hobby. But it's still like, 3D form though. That's the thing. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. Well, this, that, well, the scope of this question is: Do you do anything yeah. other than the mini thing? Um, sculpture would be nice if I could incorporate that. 
um, not something that I've really dabbled in. Do you know, I've totally, totally just had a bit of my memory from my childhood just suddenly rise from the depths. Poor memory unlocked. Yeah. What have we got? So I, I did used to draw aircraft, like airplanes as a kid. My granddad got me. I, I really, I remember I used to go on like Spitfires and Hurricanes and stuff like that. So I did used to do that as a child, but that obviously stopped many, 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 many years ago. But I did used to draw planes as well. So, so yeah, so I, do, I, have, I have done a bit, a fair bit of drawing. Um, but I think mine's a lot of the same way. Like as a kid, I used to, I always, I loved like comics and stuff as a kid. So I always was drawing like comic book art. I guess, but not like, definitely not good or actually learning how to do it. It was more as like a kid. And then as an adult though, like, no, like literally nothing. I couldn't feel, uh, even going through school, I didn't do art at school. I didn't do anything like that. Like I didn't feel, I've touched on it before. Where I was like, um, the older I got, the more like, I was more creative, like, mentally than than you're the biggest like, biggest weapon your mind my, my <laughs> mind yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah um so like i went down that road really and like the reason that i got into warhammer wasn't really the reason it, it appealed to me wasn't like oh it's art it was like more just like liking the idea of building a scene or the, mm. the, the model yeah to tell the story mm. and things like that like that that was the thing that got into me and then the art side of it the mini painting side of it is just on the side part of it yeah i never yeah i, I haven't really um really stuck with anything outside of that maybe we should that's why i never do any freehand on my models because i just haven't got that in my locker at the minute it's fair yeah new closing tradition lads hobby hacks this is where we share our quick little tip for you to finish up the show have I've you got, got, got i can one. see him going already I've got one. the wheels are turning so of recent, I have had uh, a miniature building and cleaning epiphany and discovering Tamiya sanding foam, like sponge blocks or sanding foam or sanding sponges, has literally been the greatest light bulb golden moment in miniature building and cleaning I've, I've had in 20 plus years of making and painting models. Or Do you want to just explain what those are for the Tamiya instance? make these like amazing sponge like almost, it's almost like a sponge emery board is the best way for me to explain it. So I use I use a lot of really worn, soft emery boards to like do the final polish on the model. Like I've got an emery board that I've probably had for like ten years, and it's just it's still got a little bit of a faint. Rough, ten years. It's, it, yeah, it's, it takes when you're doing soft you know, plastic. You one model a year. Yeah, so it's, it's, true, uh, yeah. Sort of yeah. it's not brand new. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, um, but um, I've got rid of my emery boards completely since using the Tamiya uh, sanding sponges or sanding foam, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're, they're really good and they come in a whole variation of grits all the way from 2000 right down to like 300 or something like that. So you've got a really good scope of different grit. You can work on resin with them. You can work on plastic with them. I've been using like a typically sort of like 600, 1000 and 2000 grit on them. And they're like, you still remove the mold lines as you normally would. Um, the moment I started using them was actually when I painted my new, the new Dante, like there's an, on the knee, he's got these really, really uh, sort of uh, frustrating sort of like joins on the knee where it joins to this groove. And obviously for the golden angle, it's like right there. Like, so I was like smoothing it down. Normally I found it really difficult. Um, and I found these Tamiya sanding sponges and just used them on that. And it literally polished the plastic like to a pristine finish. Um, almost like you can't tell the difference between, you can't tell the difference between, between um, a bit of the model that's just fresh plastic and also a bit that where the sprue joined. So yeah, so I definitely recommend you try it. If you're looking for that, polish to polish the plastic tamiya sanding sponges or sanding foam is like amazing like how amazing. are we what are we talking price wise here because i've got i've got like i just buy like multi-pack nail files yeah, yeah and then i cut them down yeah so i have like so you're constantly getting like fresh bit on the corner kind of thing i mean i just buy sandpaper sandpaper like, you can buy two thousand sandpaper sandpaper is fine but it's just fine. like i just find it easier to have like a I think like a, the thing the, I like the reason I like and they're softer than using sandpaper. I feel like it, it, is, it yeah. goes over the model, like the bumps and everything of the model a bit with, better. With, the reason with, I like using the sandpaper because this I'll, I'll do is like the same grit, like two, three, four, all the way up to like two thousand grit. The reason I like the sandpaper instead of the boards is sometimes you can get into even tighter gaps yeah. that you couldn't because obviously you can just tear it and make a smaller piece. Yeah, yeah. You can get in pretty much anywhere. The sponge is really good because you can fold it as well. It's just quite good. It retains its shape. It's it's the, the, I it is 
change the way I feel. What, 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 what was the price? What's the damage? What's it varies. It? Some of them are a couple of pounds. Like if you buy a multi pack, you can probably get like various different grits. So they come individually. Like they come one, individually. One yeah. so grit per one pack. grit per pack. Yeah, but you get and you can cut it like cut it with some scissors or cut it with a knife, and it will literally just into a section that you want to use. Um, but yeah, like cut, like between three to five to six pounds a pack, depending on the grit, and then you can get a multi pack, which is like got like various different grits in it as well so yeah they're really good like, I re i'd recommend them like massively um it's literally changed the way i clean models cool but yeah cool well thank you everyone for listening to this episode of paint perspective if you could do us a favor please rate and review us on your app of choice that would really really help the show grow thank you very much please leave your comments below as always we'll have a little uh, little chat and discussion down there please share your hobby hacks with everyone and we will catch you next week <laughs>